invited Megan Hardy, one of our new members, to come up and join me for the talk. This was unplanned until just before the service. Um, but she was at the earlier service, and we were talking afterwards. And she, she really walks this native path also and has so many great examples that um, I thought, oh, you have to hear this. It can't just be for me. So um, anyway, so welcome to Megan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Again, this was an hour ago, so I apologize for yeah. the um, roughness of what may, I may share. Well, <laughs> we, Unrehearsed. Yeah, but we know that what happens here is that we are creating this talk together and that everybody's energy comes out through our mouths here. Um, so it doesn't matter that it isn't rehearsed. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> so that song is so beautiful because it really reminds us of what is true, that there is a whole living, throbbing world right around us. And that... The, the animals that walk this earth are our family. They're, they're not just, you know, animated but insignificant. They are, they are powerful beings that have gifts for us. And, and so when we think about this, there's the physical plane where we see them, and there's the non-physical plane, which is a different dimension that is so powerful. And the animals that we see on the physical plane are stand-ins for this energy that is so much bigger. And when we begin to relate to them in that way, we have the opportunity to get help. I think that in our culture, we got off track back in the Age of Enlightenment when we began to celebrate the rational mind. And there was some value to that for sure because there, we have had great achievements because of the rational mind as it's been developed. And there was a lot of superstition that was not really helpful that the rational mind helped us to veer away from. But like many things, the pendulum swung too far. And where the rational mind has taken us in our lives and in our culture has been disastrous on some levels. All we have to do is look at everything about global warming. And it comes because we think that we are separate from and better than the living world around us. And so the medicine to get us back into balance comes from, I believe, the natural world. And we can seek the help of the animals and the animal spirits in order to do that. And so what we're going to do is share some stories of what that could look like, how, how alive they really are for us, and how that, how that help shows up. Do you want to share yeah, your Yeah, no, I'll jump in. story. Um, well, yeah, before I share my story, so I had a, an hour <laughs> between <laughs> the first service and sharing with you guys now um, to think about why it is that I have had a large number of animal experiences. Um, and I had the, you know, the pleasure of being able to share with Jane after the first service this morning. I was so excited because this really is a huge part of my spiritual path and a huge part of my, what I would call medicine, which mm -hmm. you reflected on as well. And I realized in that time that, and this kind of came up in my bio, it took me a long time to find a spiritual community. And from my Catholic upbringing to now, a 40-year-old woman, I have stayed connected to spirituality through the animal realm. Mm -hmm. And that was my point to source. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I was spiritual, but mm -hmm. I didn't have the right suit to wear with the human community. Mm -hmm. And so I had a thread with the animal nation. And so that really kept me seeking and looking and, mm -hmm. you know, and really growing on my own. And that's led me here. And as a result, I've had a plethora of really profound experiences and 
I could share lots and lots and lots of them. And the one that came up as um, something that I shared with Jane that has a lot of juice to it is um, it's the story of, have you heard the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow? <laughs> and in that song, they speak about the bluebird. And this was in 2014, and I was living in Richmond, Virginia. And at that time, I was heavily seeking um, healing. And I didn't know that I was seeking healing, but I was. And I found a vision quest, a woman in New Mexico who was hosting a vision quest, and uh, was able to sign up for four days, four nights, on her land and the homework leading up to this time was to spend a day in nature from sun up to sundown and to really ask what it was that we were asking in that space in that ceremonial space what was it that we were seeking and I spent my day and there was lots of cool things that happened a dragonfly landed on my hand and I was down by the river but from the moment that that ceremony ended to me going to New Mexico. Now I'm living in, the, the, in Richmond, Virginia, in a suburb, and I had my golden doodle. And we would you know, go on our morning walk, and on three separate occasions, right on the sidewalk, I found a blue jay feather. And three different locations, three different days, three different feathers. So I get to New Mexico, and we're taking a tour of the land and picking our vision quest spots. And the first thing I notice is flock of blue jays all around the space. <laughs> and so I knew, okay, there was some connecting of the dots that was happening. And in that four days, I realized, so up until that point, I had had two miscarriages and I had mm. lost another, another very important spirit to me. So I had three spirits in my life that had come into my life and left abruptly. And I had not honored that journey. I grieved that journey with those spirits, but I hadn't actually honored the fact that that was part of their contract with me and they needed to be on that journey and I needed to be on that, um, you know, be connected with those three spirits in that way. And so at that time, I decided that when I got home from my vision quest, I would put into place a three-week actual healing ceremony for those three spirits. And at the end of that three-week, so I did a seven-day cycle for each spirit. At the end of those three weeks, in the next week following, I found another three separate days, three part different neighborhoods, three different blue jay feathers. And so I'm very curious now that this is all happening and so a month later, I went to my first equine guided life coaching experience. And I found myself belly to belly with a horse. And I realized in that moment, it was the month that I was due from the last miscarriage I had had. And this horse was breathing life back into my belly because I had not allowed life to come through me in that way. And I had been really attached to being a mom. And I wasn't a mom and I wasn't in a relationship at that time. And I had put a lot of worth or value on my worth being a mom. And I wasn't. And in that moment, I realized I had to be unattached from that outcome. Wow. A month later, I met Rhett. <laughs> Three months later, we were pregnant. And the night of the, the ceremony I had with the horse, I was um, in a group, in a learning group, and the closing of that ceremony they played somewhere over the rainbow. And it makes me cry. I mean, it gives me such emotion now because I was, I hadn't honored everything that happened in the way of beauty. Mm -hmm. And by that bird coming, those birds coming to me and offering me that gift, I really was allowed to let go and open up in a different way. And that brought me the gift that is my life today. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is so powerful. And the one last little part was in the four-day vision quest in one of my dreams, this blue jay landed on my shoulder in my dream and pinched my cheek and then just sat there. And I learned from my teacher that that's a claiming 
ceremony in the bird nation. And so for me, the bird nation, and so um, I want to hear your owl story. <laughs> uh, the birds speak to me a lot. And so I know now to listen because I know that there is such a gift in, in that that energy that they bring to us. Yeah. In fact, your husband had yes. his own bird story. Yes. Why don't you share that one? So independent of my vision quest, and this is why we were destined to be together, <laughs> he had done his own vision quest, and I, this was a, probably more like a decade ago, and uh, he was a professional soccer player playing in New York and knew intuitively that that chapter of his life was coming to an end. And, uh, but it's a big thing to let go of. He was a very successful player, and he went for um, a a week and his friend literally dropped him off in a canyon in New Mexico like mine was organized <laughs> and guided and he just like grabbed a jug of water <laughs> and went and he was in meditation and had the knowing that he needed to be done and he looked up and this you know flock of crows were circling and cawing and and to him, the message was, yes, like, we are supporting your, this, you know, this knowing, this wisdom that's coming forth to you. And so he was empowered by this decision. You know, he knew this was the right thing. Got back to New York and was like, I'll play one more season. And the first game he had sustained a back injury. Mm -hmm. And so his teaching was to listen. Mm -hmm. And how I think we all have yeah. those moments where we get the tap and then the thud <laughs> and then maybe the bigger thud <laughs> yeah and uh but i love this i love this lesson i love this teaching and in the native american um teachings that i actually learned when we entered the medicine wheel we entered and say all my relations mm -hmm. and that is honoring that we are one part of a sacred hoop of which all of the members of that hoop are our relatives right and so we honor them by calling them our relations mm -hmm. and it's humbling because it brings us back to it's not a hierarchy mm -hmm. we're one piece and we're all here together and the more that we can go back to our wholeness and be in balance then that's where the healing comes from yeah yeah that's great the um when you say there's no hierarchy that makes me think too that um animals don't have a hierarchy mm -hmm. Like we say, the lion is the king of the jungle. The lion doesn't say that. The lion <laughs> doesn't think it's better than somebody else. And there's no ego involved in it. So when, when you think about spirit animals and them being all relations, realizing it's all of them. Like one of your powerful stories was about the ant. Will yeah. you share that one? <laughs> Yes. So we moved here a year ago and we bought five acres and I had gone through a two and a half year uh, journey or teaching with a, a woman called White Eagle Woman. And I love being in ceremony. I love the sacredness of it. So when we moved from the burbs to our five acres, I was like, I'm building a medicine wheel. And so our five acres is very natural and just like what you would see out here, sagebrush and a lot of sand. And there was one spot in the back corner where there was just this little mound of dirt and a little bit of green grass. It was really unusual for the rest of the, the space. So I said, well, that feels really powerful. And it was, I loved the juniper tree that was right in that space as well. So I marked that as the center of my medicine wheel and designed with rocks the outer rim and then created an inner diamond with white stones. And that was last year in September and so fast forward to maybe two months ago me and a friend were walking our horses out in the back part of our property and we walked to the medicine wheel and I hadn't truth be told I hadn't been out there in a little in a few months and in the middle of the center diamond a red ant hill had formed and the little red ants were doing their thing all in the center of this, this sacred space. And so when I went back to my t understanding of the medicine wheel, the center is the place that we hold our inner flame, our inner flame. So it's the metaphor for our inner flame and how we tend to our inner flame is representative of kind of what our relationship is with our spirit. 
And so here, I was like, well, okay, spirit, <laughs> I get it. I need to pay a little bit more attention to my medicine and my medicine wheel because these ants were, you know, zooming around and they were in that, you know, bringing my focus and my attention to that, that particular medicine wheel. Yeah. That was pretty nice. I have a picture if you'd like. <laughs> this, this subject is so rich. I'm just looking at the time and thinking, oh, we have to end. And there's just so many stories I want to share, and I know you have more. So um, when we gather afterwards, please talk to one another, because I know you all have stories, too. We're not the only ones. Share the stories about your medicine and what you've received. And, and think in terms of when animals cross your path, especially ones that you don't usually see, that, that they're bringing medicine for you. Even when it's something like, I know you, you hit a deer, for example, and other people have had that experience, or you hit some other animal. What if it's coming and offering you medicine? Because we are not animals are not chained to this life in the way that we are mentally. And so for an animal to do that for you and bring you something of whatever the qualities that it holds are is a gift. And they will gladly give that gift because we are all relations. And that's the thing to, to remember. We're not alone. If you have a question, reach out. Let's bring our earth back into balance by treating each other like family. So thank you for being brave thank and you. just jumping up here. <laughs>